G'day everyone. Today I wanted to have a look at uh, routing offset strategies with EasyNest and alternatively with NRoute. So today here we start with EasyNest. I've just already started it. The first thing you'll always need to do is create a blank piece of paper. It doesn't matter about the sheet size. I'm not actually using that to do my cut. Now for those of you that have the ability to actually draw lines, you can draw a line to get a line to deal with. For those of you that cannot, you can always grab a Capmaster file, a DXF. You'll need to check that you're in the uh, DXF format. Uh, typically you'll find on your C drive machining under some sort of a drawing under a particular material, you'll find a DXF of some description. Okay. Coincidentally here I get a curve shelf, doesn't matter what I need, I just need this line on the outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the line, we can right click and then create toolpaths, a routing offset. We could alternatively click on the line and click up here on the routing offset. Okay. Now if you've previously saved some you can find them up here or what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start from something from scratch. Down in the middle here, I can look at my different tools. I could actually filter this and make it easier for me to see that I want to deal with a end milling tool. So I can cut down my list to look at less tools. Now I'm going to deal with something pretty simple here. I'm just going to get a uh, compression cutter. In this case, it's a 9.5 compression cutter. You could have different names of tools. It could be a completely different tool for a different tasks. I'm currently thinking about a particular task dealing with a particle board with a 9.5 compression cutter of the three wing ver version. One of the first stages I'm going to do is think about a depth. I'm thinking about using a tool at about 16 odd millimeters. I know that it can come in 16.3 and 16.5, but I'm just going to play with a flat number of 16 because the difference in the 0.3 and 0.5 can be taken care of elsewhere. The second stage is I'm going to think about whether this is an outside cut or an inside cut. It will make a difference to what I'm doing. I'm thinking about the outside cut at the moment. Um, we're not going to go too much into a sharp corners though is to do with uh, whether you're going to go around the corners in a radius style or a non radius style. I'm going to leave it off sharp corners. Um, now that I've uh, defined what I'm thinking about, I'm now going to go into the edit function to actually go further define what I want this tool to do. Now when it comes to depth, it's just going to come from the surface down to the depth that I'm thinking. Passes, how many uh, takes of the tool I'm going to use to get there. In this case, I'm actually going to do what's called a final pass. You can see that automatically jumped to two. I am actually going to specify that I want to take all but a millimeter. So my first take is going to take the 15 millimeters and the last take is going to take the final one millimeter. So even if this technique gets stretched out, it's still going to take one millimeter as the last pass. In the width, that's not appropriate when I'm using just one tool. I would have to have used two tools to create the, uh, the width of cut. In the feeds, this is important. Uh, it is very, very much specific on the material cutting, the tool you're using, um, and the increment that your machine is waiting for. Typically, a lot of machines are going to be in millimeters per minute. Um, you'll need to check that out for each individual machine. Now, in these particular cases, I said I'm thinking about cutting particle board with a 9.5 compression cutter. So in my circumstance here, I'm thinking about uh, 22,000 millimeters per minute is what I want to make my feed rate. And I'm going to do the same speed for my final cut. I'm going to plunge in somewhere around half of that speed. Plunging is the ability to come into the material, so you don't always want to come in as fast as you actually cut. Dwelling is not necessarily advised in most cases as dwelling leads to pausing. It's a, it makes the tool hold still while still spinning. Friction on the spot does lead to burning, so it's not a suggested idea to dwell for too long if you are going to dwell. Spindle speed, most machines will run at about 18,000 RPM, but once again, this is purely dependent on what the tool is and what you're doing with it. Different speeds can be uh, done, generally not too much higher than what the machine can actually do. In direction, uh, climbing in a male cut, so we're doing a male cut, climbing is a clockwise direction around the part, so the tool is going to be uh, run clockwise around the shape. Conventional is actually an anti-clockwise cut. The two cuts can leave a different finish uh, and cause different flexing on the tool, so they will leave a different finish. Um, so be advised that they can create different answers. When it comes to entry and exit, uh, depending on what you're doing as of the task, 
uh, entering with none and exiting with none, as you can see currently, is just going to plunge the tool straight down and pull the tool straight back up once it's finished going around the part. Can have its merits, can have its flaws. I'm going to soften the entry of this. We te technically use line. Somewhere around three diameters of the tool or a little bit more would probably be good. I'm going to go in this case with about a 50 millimeters worth of length. I'm going to go on a one degree angle and I'm going to make it go three dimensionally. So I'm going to make it come down on the angle. Uh, it just makes the entry a little bit softer and tends to disguise any chipping from uh, the entry point and exit point. And I'm going to do the same on my exit. But well, as you can see, you could have a different specification from me. I'm using the space bar to take that button if anyone's interested. Uh, exit and overlap, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify probably two diameters of the tool uh, on the overlap. That means I'm going to go past where I entered by about 20 millimeters. So don't get confused by this save as. This save as would save just this movement of technique here to be used again. I don't need that at the moment, but it can have its purpose. I'm just going to press OK. Now that is now defined all inside there. So now when I save as, this is saving your name of your strategy has a uh, lot of benefit. If you save it with the right type of name, it'll make it a lot easier to use it in multiple circumstances. I often see people putting things like border. I don't suggest that's a very good name. It doesn't tell me much about it. What I would tend to do is like we've got here, this sort of a name is a lot more appropriate. It's defining what the tool is, how I am moving it, which position of the line it is, and how deep I configured it for. So if I need to use it in another circumstance, then I can, and it will just simply be what I've asked it for. So that pretty much wraps up doing a simple basic strategy. If I wanted to do a uh, male version and a female version, as you can see there, I've applied my line. If I want to do a female version, then I can get the technique that I did before, it's currently still here because it's still the last thing I used. I could switch it, save it, give it a female name, and move on and save. And that would then make a female copy. You can also see here as I zoom in, there is my entry point that starts there and then goes around the part in a clockwise fashion and then goes it by an overlap of 20 mil and commences the outtake. That means when you're dealing with that type of strategy, you need to make sure that you actually have sufficient clearance from another part to not interfere with another cut. That line should not go over another blue line. Thanks for listening.